least scripture. Okay, so that was a little behind the scenes. A, 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 fam, is your girl and I, A, and real quick, I have your daily scripture that I've decided instead of just posting it, and I hope you guys are leaving your comments and your questions and concerns below. I can't see them because I'm actually on my way to an interview with my boy, Jerry Dumas, uh, in regards to Haiti, because I'm kind of back with the Haiti tip. While is sleeping, let me just share my thoughts. So first of all, good afternoon. Praise the Lord for all of you sexy homo sapiens out there. Um, I'm just so excited about what God is doing in my life and in the lives of others around me. You guys may be seeing some of my activity as of late. And I just want to preface this by saying, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall literally mount up on the wings of eagles, or they shall mount up and then like fly like eagles or whatever Jesus was talking about. But it had to do with the eagles, it had to do with mounting up, and it had to do with waiting upon the Lord because those whom are patient in God know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you know what I'm talking about, give me an amen, a shout out, whatever. So as of late, you guys have been seeing my activity. I'm getting back out. Um, that little boy who's quite a little man has been stressing your girl out a little bit, but not in a bad way, just because he's super advanced, right? And when you have a super advanced child who's very independent, like his mama, then you already know there's going to be problems on the territory due to the fact that you have to keep up with said child. So I already kind of had an idea of what I was getting into, but honestly, fam, I didn't have an idea because every child is different. And before I go any further, I want to remind all of you to read into like psychological theories, as well as those who studied psychology or actually the fathers of psychology. Hold on, I got a little shine right here. Actually, the fathers of psychology who literally stated some very important things back in like the 1800s, early 1900s, et cetera. Now, I may have to add this, right? They probably stole a lot of their theories from other communities and cultures because as we know, the uh, Europeans were Neanderthals, Neanderthals, whatever that word is, Neanderthals. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so they didn't have a lot of thinking capacity. So what ended up happening was, and I'm giving you guys some straight facts, don't come at me, but let's be real. In Africa, we know that the Africans are the first people on the planet. So when you have a people that are jealous of those that are first in line, of course, there's going to be some rift and wrath, right? So it is in my understanding that due to the fact that there was a lot of jealousy between the Neanderthals and the first people, humans on the planet, which were in Africa, what could have potentially happened to them is that Sigmund Freud, who happened to be an atheist, may have run across some Africans at some point and stated, well, they have this way of being, but we as white people should be first in line for everything. Therefore, we're not going to utilize their behavioral um, tactics and attitudes and ways of life. And we're just going to implement ourselves into the history books because white people have stolen so much from history to begin with. Don't quote me if you don't want to, but if you do want to quote me, you can, because I'm not lying. Most of everything on this planet has been stolen and manipulated by a community of people that literally want everything to themselves, right? So as of late, you have seen me going back out and doing certain things. Not every white person is bad. Not every white person is a killer. Not every white person is a thief. However, history does show that that behavior actually comes from this particular climate in the United States, not even the United States, in the world, because their hearts are ice cold. In Africa, you'll find that the people run around on plush land, green grass. Therefore, they're more happy. They don't have a reason to go out and kill anybody because why? Let's kill the food, let's kill the animals, and let's eat the food. That's what Africans were predominantly doing. That's what other communities were predominantly doing. But then again, when you have a class of people that have old hearts, all they want to do is gather, they want to kill, and they want to take everything for themselves. But hopefully that changes.
because at the end of the day, we also know that the first church was established where? In Ethiopia. So I'm not going to go too far with my theories because a lot of people get offended. A lot of people get offended by the things that I say. You know why? Because it's self-denial. It's self-hate. And I'm not going to get mad with anybody that's mad at me today. You know why? Because you haven't come to the realization that I've come to. And it's only natural that you could sit here and classify me as being racist and rude and demonic. You could classify me as whatever you want, but just do the research for yourself. So let's get back to the point of this afternoon. First of all, great job to a particular con council member who may become a congressman, who may become the president of the United States one day. You never know. But that brother is doing great stuff. And if you see him on my page, you know why, because he's actually leading the way, whereas a lot of people are afraid to do so. So if you see that man on my page quite often, frequently, especially with somebody named King, I can't say his name too loud, so he don't wake up. Understand, it's literally a thing when I see somebody doing such great work for the community and they are standing against the opposition and they're not afraid to do so. Because as you know, fear is a debilitating disease. What is fear? False evidence appearing real, right? when we're afraid of different things. And trust me, Anaya A has a lot of anxiety and I have a lot of fear and I've been working on that, right? But it wasn't self-talk, it was the atmosphere around me. It was the things that occurred around me that caused me to have a certain fear in certain areas. In other areas, I'm as bold as a lion. I'm as swift as a serpent, but I'm as gentle as a dove, right? But when that fear is attacking you in certain places, of course, you're going to be afraid. I mean, because it's a natural state of mind to be afraid of certain things. We cannot not be afraid of everything. So I want you guys to put that in your minds. Now, let's move forward to this Bible verse, because I have a Haiti interview in five minutes. So today. I was literally going to post the Bible verse, right? I was like, let me post this viral verse. What am I going to talk about today? Because every day God gives me another message. And for those that wonder, yes, God speaks to me and he speaks to all of you guys. Oh, all of you people too. Um, but you guys don't listen. You guys don't think that it's God a lot of the times. And that's why you are here doing stupid stuff. I do stupid stuff too because I'm not perfect, but understand this fam, I listen to God. And today he had this message for you all. He had Proverbs again. Proverbs is winning for the week. So I think he might speak to me for the rest of the week in Proverbs. But for today, we have Proverbs 13, 22. And I feel like the reason that God gave this to me is because in my own life, my father don't give a damn about me or my siblings. And I can say it publicly because guess what? He's over there taking care of somebody else's kids in Atlanta. So I started off with Proverbs 22 as the Bible verse for today, but naturally God said something different and he wanted me to read all of this. And if you know my father, tell him that he is wrong and God don't like ugly. It says, Proverbs 13, 22, a good person, a.k.a. a father, a.k.a. not just a sperm donor, a.k.a. a man of God, a.k.a. a man of statue, leaves an inheritance for their children's children. But a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. So initially, my Bible verse was going to be the verses where it's like, you know, the wealth of the wicked, excuse me, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. That's what the original thinking was for this afternoon. And then God said, no, it's deeper than that. Read the entire scripture. So let's do it. We have three minutes. Proverbs 13, a wise son heeds his father's instruction. Mind you, I'm in the new international version, not the King James version, the drunk man. Okay, a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebuke or rebukes. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. But the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Again, the white folks that be trying to kill people, steal people's houses, gentrification, all of that, right? We'll get into that topic later. Okay, they have, um, the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Those who guide their lips perverse, excuse me, preserve their lives. Honestly, I could work on that. You know me, I talk a lot about stuff that's real true. Sometimes I can get in trouble, but God knows my heart and he's helping me. But those who speak rashly will come to ruin. 
I honestly don't say everything I feel though, fam. Trust and believe that because there's a lot more I could be talking about in these streets. Ow. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. I stay satisfied because I love to do God's work. The righteous hate what is false. Amen. Oh. But the wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame upon themselves. I don't bring shame upon myself because I have a mother and a father, even though he gets on my nerves. But I respect them enough not to bring shame upon my family, even though my family is questionable. Righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Ow. One person pretends to be rich yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. Be careful. Let me pause real quick. We have about 60 seconds. Be careful whom you think is poor and rich. And I'm going to give you this quick story. Recently, a few months ago, jury, you're going to have to wait for me because this is God speaking. And when God be talking, I don't even play. I got to put this out here. A lot of people know me as the young lady that had an apartment in the Bronx that somebody tried to kill me in my apartment. A lot of people know me as a fighter. A lot of people know me as somebody who has literally stood up for so many. Um, and people don't even know my backstory because it was never intended for me to, in my humble opinion, in the predicaments I found myself in. I didn't grow up poor, right? I grew up with a lot more than a lot of people. And like, for me, I didn't understand the word poverty. I didn't understand what it meant to not have anything because I had an abundance. I'm not gonna call myself rich or nothing like that because I, I really, you know, am real humble. And that's why I love people because what happens is when you are rich or when you have a lot, right, you tend to become real nasty to people. You feel as though you're above people, right? So when I would be flying all over the world or whatever, and my family's flying all over and we have protection in many different forms and we are doing our thinking and I'm being chauffeured around in certain areas, of course, I'm thinking that's the way of life until I started seeing life differently when I moved to South Florida and had to experience racism, first of all, which was not sexy whatsoever. So growing up, I lived in two different worlds, fam. Actually, it could have been like three or four different worlds if you wanna be two folk, traveling all the time, experiencing hatred, being bullied for being a nigger. I literally got called a nigger. I literally got called this thing that I had to beat up a white boy about in fifth grade. You can look at my records, I don't care. Like, I've been fighting all my life because in Brooklyn, everybody around me is real cordial. We live in the buildings. Maybe some people might be racist, but you don't know what racism is because everybody just chilling, working hard. We chilling. We like, you know, traveling amongst each other, being chauffeured in these streets, traveling. My father had mad cars going like whatever he was going. My mother was always in school getting educated. We were around a bunch of white people, Germans, you know, Haitians, Jamaicans, you name it, Puerto Ricans. But I get to South Florida and these bastards want to call me a cat eating Haitian and that I came off a banana boat. Is y'all serious, my son? You don't know about these hands, these Brooklyn hands? So let me stop real quick. Where was I? So be careful when you be thinking that people don't have anything. Months ago, I was in a situation that I didn't ask to be put in. But the minute I found out what was going on around me, just a little bit, because if you guys know anything about me, who knows I'm a thinker and I analyze everything. And the woman that kept asking me nasty questions, I felt like she was literally asking me these questions for a reason to like embarrass me or something, right? So I was like, Mm, let me tell her something on one of these conversations. And lo and behold, old broad failed the test. Let me tell you how. When I explained to her, when I first got to New York City, I was homeless, which I ended up being homeless because I don't take nothing from nobody. That's a fact. I don't take nothing. I was always taught to be independent. When I came to New York City, if y'all want to know the truth, with my health failing, all I could care about is getting my health on track. Because if you don't have your health, you have nothing. And this old broad kept testing me, son. And I got to say this. I know I got an interview, but my interview is probably watching now, right? Because I got to tell the world this whole truth real quick because I hate when people sit here and dog people out because they don't understand nothing. When your health is failing, you don't care where you live. I didn't care if I lived under the bridge. I didn't care if I lived in the swamp waters. I didn't care if I lived on the train. As long as my fucking health was together, I could overcome anything because I had my bag. 
because my parents got properties, because I'm not a poor chick, I'm not a dumb broad, I'm not out here hurting nobody, so God is always going to protect me. So when she's like, I, 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 tell me more about you, I already knew that was a setup for my downfall. So I'm spitting game like, yeah, I was homeless. You know, I went through this thing. I was working for somebody on the radio station and I was telling her, you know, that basically I couldn't do certain things or whatever that she wanted because she was mad disrespectful because at the time I was literally living in a hotel, son. So here go old broad being a dumb duck, writing notes, writing notes. You taking paper and pen to my story for what? Who is you talking to, son? Who is you telling this to? So then when we have our next convo, I flip the script and here it is right quick. I'm gonna take another five minutes of your time because at the end of the day, sometimes we gotta understand the mind. So I tells old broad like, yeah, you know that homeless thing, whatever, cause she brings it back up. So she gonna say, yeah, I was taking notes and Anaya, the thing that hurt me the most was when you told me that you was homeless and how they treated you. So you was taking notes about me being homeless, right? So let me tell you something else. My lady, do you understand that I got a mansion waiting for me down in South Florida that I can't live in because I'm allergic to Florida? You understand not only did I go through psychological, emotional, physical abuse in my life, I also have a rare condition. I can't be in the sun, I can't be in the tropics, I can't be around grass and I can't be around trees. How the hell am I gonna be in South Florida though? Even though I got a mansion on the hills, right? Right? So you wanna be taking notes on the sister to report back to somebody to laugh at what? Because at the end of the day, what you also don't understand and why a lot of people don't understand me is this. In South Florida, right? My mom had me investing in properties in Florida, right? In a most racist community that you would ever think of because there was nobody on the lands. And if you know anything about zoning and properties and, and real estate and all of that, the most valuable thing we got is land. Right. So when I'm dumb, young, investing in properties, fam, and I got to tell it like this, because I need you black people to wake up. I need you other people to wake up and see what's going on real quick. So I'm going to spoon you some information real quick. Right. So I'm sitting up here investing in properties in some damn little ricky thing town called LaBelle fucking Florida. What is a LaBelle Florida? We don't even know to this day because there's probably not much going on still. And I want to let them people know in Florida, I'm coming back for my property though. I'm coming back for my property. I'm coming back for everything God already gave me. So here we go spitting out this dough, right? And these white people looking like, where these Negroes get all this money from? I'm not going to keep using the word N-I-G-G-A, but I'm going to say Negro real quick. And so I'm spitting out all this cash and I'm dumb young because I'm making my money. It don't matter how, but I'm just giving out the money because I'm doing what I do and I'm flying out and I'm just in, but they hating me because they don't want me to be like them, right? They don't want us to have nothing. So when I'm paying up for this land or whatever, who's thinking about taxes or whatnot? I'm traveling. I'm in Europe. I'm traveling. I'm over there in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm like on the beach being my sexiest I could be before I got this rare condition and now I'm a little kid, you see, right? So now peak game. Here goes my mom, Omar Dukes, who's taking care of me because of my rare condition. We losing properties because of taxes? So you mean government of Florida and government of the United States, you could take everything from everybody just like that because of a couple of dollars? So old girl, back to her because she really pissed me off. Old girl gonna be taking notes because she thought I was homeless and I didn't have nothing. You see somebody walking around and you don't know their struggle, you don't know their pain, right? You gotta sit there and write notes. I was homeless, right? So when I had to break it down, I lost almost a million dollars in land. In land. My fallback money, my play with money, right? Because the bags that I have, I'm keeping it safe for the future. Because if you guys don't understand investments, you'll never comprehend the mind that knows about investments that got something. So I got to spit this game to some of you dummies out here because you don't get nothing. You don't get nothing. You want to buy the knife. You want to buy the chains. You want to buy the gooch for what? They making their profit and you got liabilities. So let's go back to the word of God because I got three minutes, like I said. And that dumb duck, I bet I never see her again and everybody else that stresses me out because at the end of the fucking day, y'all don't know nothing, bro. When you have lands and you have houses. That's the real deal right there. But y'all that want to be playing around people's names in the streets, we want to sit there and talk about the next G. Yeah, son. All right. Where was I? 
ah, a person's riches may ransom, sorry, may ransom their life, but the poor cannot respond to threatening rebukes. You know why? You don't give a damn, right? Because we poor, right? Ah, right? The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Where there is strife, there is pride. All this drama between people in different communities, they want it like that, son. They want it like that to keep tricking y'all dummies, right? Uh, wisdom is found in those who take advice. Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Investment properties, right? Right? Real estate, right? What do you call it? IRAs, mutual funds that I had since I was 14 years old. Why do you think I could move the way I move, bro? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Make it grow. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. Ow. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Good judgment wins favor, but the way of the unfaithful leads to their destruction. Keep being unfaithful on your partner. Keep cheating. Keep being a duck in these streets. You're going to find the duck ways at that. All who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. I told you about that fool earlier, right? She's dumb as them. Dumb, dumb, dumb. A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a trustworthy envoy brings healing. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. I like to get honored and corrected, excuse me. I like to get corrected so I can stay honored. Look at the fact that I don't know everything. I know what I know, but I let people know when I don't know something so I can know more. Y'all need to follow that too, bet. Okay, it says walk with the wise and become wise, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I missed one. A longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but fools detest turning from evil. Walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. Companions of fools, they suffer destruction. You know why? Because they don't know how to think real good. They don't analyze nothing. They just run their fucking mouth. Trouble pursues the sinner, but the righteous are rewarded with good things. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. That means legacy. That means money. That means houses. Unlike some people I know that don't give a damn about their future. You know why? Because they're hurt. Hurt people hurt people, right? But a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous, like your girl, Anaya A. Because I'm always checking out where the next bag is on a low. And now I'm telling y'all some of my information. You feel me? All right. An unplowed, an unplowed field produces food for the poor, but injustice sweeps it away. While y'all thinking that you're getting fed, sometimes you're getting that stuff that's not even supposed to be real food. Like it's between the wheat and the um, what you call it? It's like wheat and other stuff um, that grows in wheat, wheat and weeds. The wheats are good. The weeds ain't. We pull up the wheat and we eat them, but we pull up the weeds and throw them away. Y'all get that knowledge too real quick. It's going to come a little bit later for some of y'all because y'all not with it real quick, but you're going to get it eventually. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to, to, to discipline them. The righteous eat to their heart's content, but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry. So there you have it, folks. I just laid down the law real quick. So now y'all know a little bit more. I lost almost a million dollars, a milli, right? That was supposed to be family inheritance because a couple of dollars of taxes. Nobody's paying attention to all these different codes and laws and different, you know, rules and regulations when you gotta survive and your children get sick. I mean, my mom was trying her best but my pops don't even give a damn about us, right? My pops is running the streets, still taking care of everybody else's kids, right? Right? So at the end of the day, I get why my moms had to do what she had to do as a provider and as a strong person. Do we get along today? Not very much, but I understand her better. So you pops, you a dog, bro. Like the way you move is sickening. You was my best friend, but you played your position. All right, guys, I'll be back with a live with my brother, Jerry, as we get on this about Haiti. Peace.